Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about uh, some of the general terms in the curved mirror and we will our, we will extend our understanding towards why convex mirrors are converging sorry why concave mirrors are converging and why the convex mirrors are diverging in nature. So uh, for this particular thing we should always understand where is normal because that is the most crucial part that if you understand how to draw normal then it would be very easier for you to understand all cases all the ray diagrams as well as why uh, the convex mirrors are um, you know, diverging and the concave mirrors are converging. So let us try to try to actually draw and understand how to uh, draw the normal. So here I have a compass and with the compass I am taking a random arbitrary radius and I will try to draw a circle and a very small section of the circle I am trying to make it as mirror. So uh, you have to be only careful about one thing that uh, the normal is the radius of the circle. We will uh, we'll discuss about that particular thing. Okay. So I have selected any, um, uh, any general uh, arbitrary uh, distance and now I am trying to draw a circle. Actually we need not to make the entire circle right and uh, the point at which I have my compass that would be the center of the circle. So this is almost a mirror and uh, I am marking this point like this and now actually I need not to draw the complete circle. Now this is my convex mirror that is ready. Now from here if I draw a straight line from the center if I draw a straight line I will get this point as the pole of the mirror. This point is called C and C is center of curvature. The center of the the entire mirror. This mirror is actually made from a hollow glass sphere. So the center of that glass sphere is the center of the uh, center of curvature. Now this point where the where this extended line meets the mirror that is called the pole. It is actually the geometrical center of the mirror. So this part is the mirror and its geometrical center is somewhere over here. And the midpoint of these two is focus F. Now this line is called principal axis. So principal axis contains center of curvature, focus and pole. Right now we are not discussing much about focus but you just need to remember that focus is the midpoint of C and P. Now this distance from C to P would be R, F is focus, R is you can see that this is the center of the circle and to the exterior edge this is the radius of curvature. This point from f to p this distance is represented by small f and small f is the focal length. Okay, And the principal axis contains all the points. So, in this way you can make all these points and uh, now let us try to understand uh, this thing I mean uh, the case of the con convex mirror as well this was concave mirror and again if you would have drawn um, like this suppose uh, this is a this is a convex mirror and in convex mirror if you try to make a whole full circle the C might be appearing somewhere over here. Again if I join a straight line from C this will be the principal axis and this is my principal axis. This point is almost the geometrical center so this is pole. The midpoint of these two would be focus and so on. But 
the light would never come like this because this is the non reflecting part as we already discussed in the previous lectures. So, you can extend this principal axis somewhere over here and the light would come like this. Okay. Now, why one more one one most important thing you sh you cannot draw a focus and center of curvature over here you can just mark it but it is inappropriate to draw because the mirror has always one center of curvature and one focus you shall not uh, draw it on this side of the mirror in the same way if i extend this line over here and if i make p and f and c uh, it is not permitted okay now let us understand that why convex mirror and concave mirror mirrors are called diverging and converging. So, here I have drawn a concave mirror and if I finish it I may get this center point over here. This is my principal axis and this is this is center of curvature, this is pole and the midpoint is focus. Now, if a ray of light suppose strikes this mirror parallel to the principal axis like this, this is a point of incidence. Now, even though it is a curved mirror, reflection is going to take place and in reflection the laws of reflection will always be obeyed. So, even a very small part of this curved mirror is always a plane mirror. So, this very small part of a curved mirror is a plane mirror. Now, from here if you want to draw the normal, the normal always passes through center of curvature. So, the point of incidence and C, I am supposed to connect it like this and I will extend this line like this. So, this is my normal this would be my angle of incidence. So, you can see that the reflected ray would be on the other side of the normal and at the same angle if I try to make it, the ray would be going like this and if I extend this backwards I will get focus. So, always the normal has to pass through C. Why? We will discuss it. Okay, let us consider a case over here, a ray which is parallel to the principal axis. Now, this is the point of incidence and a very small part of this curved mirror is also a plane mirror and now the normal, I am supposed to pass it through C. So, this is my normal, this is the angle of incidence. So, at the same angle the ray would go. like this. In the same way, if I draw another ray like this, this would be the point of incidence, this would be the normal like this and at the same angle the ray would go like this. You can see that if two rays are falling on the mirror like this and if they are going apart from one another, it is called diverging action and the same thing is happening over here. And over here, when two light rays, if they come in, one like this, another like this, from this point again, if I am supposed to draw the normal, then I have to connect it with C, normal passes through C and this angle is angle of incidence. So, the angle of reflection would be like that and you can see that if these two rays are falling on the mirror, they are converging in. So, they are brought back inside the mirror. That is why concave mirror is converging and convex mirror since the rays are going apart from one another is diverging mirror. If the reflected rays do not meet, it produces a virtual image and if reflected rays they meet, it produces a real image. So, always over here there is a formation of virtual image. Now, let us understand why this the normal actually passes through the center of curvature. Okay. Suppose this is the concave mirror and if I complete the circle, I get this point as, as C. 
make sure this is very important you cannot just draw with your free hand and put C anywhere otherwise you would definitely make a mistake make sure that you are almost somewhere near about uh, somewhere on the somewhere very near to the center of curvature to get the exact answer now draw the principal axis this point is P and suppose I say that a ray strikes at this point on the mirror then this would be the point of incidence from here the normal should always pass through C now why it is why this why all the normal has to pass through C it is because this is the radius as uh, this is the center and this is the edge of the circle so this is the radius and a very small section of the curved mirror is always a plane mirror and this plane mirror behaves as a tangent and the angle between the tangent and the normal is always 90 degree so that is why the normal is always at an angle of 90 degree with the mirror so why all the normals has to pass through C because normal makes an angle of 90 degree with the mirror okay and this is the radius and a very small section of the very small section of the curved mirror is always plain so the radius and the uh, tangent are also making an angle of 90 degree so this has to be a radius and the radius always has to pass through C so that means all the normals they are radius and radius has to pass through C that's why all the normals they pass through C.